Okay, this is Charles Sterling from Sterling Power Products. Just giving you a quick chat on the differences on between a battery to battery charger and a split charge relay and why you should not be using a split charge relay on your vehicle if you have a Euro 6 engine and uh, well you shouldn't be using it anyway but Euro 6 particularly bad and I'll explain why. So let's start off with what um, split charge relays are actually doing. So you have your alternator here which goes then to your starter battery here and then on your camper van you have your secondary battery system be it uh, one or two batteries so that's the auxiliary battery system. Now what a split charge relay does is really very simple. You simply come off your starter battery the split charge relay, which um, just simply either voltage um, activated or ignition activated, all it does is join the two batteries together. That's all it does. It doesn't do anything more than that. It simply links your starter battery and your auxiliary battery together. That's it. Now with Euro 6, we have a problem. With Euro 6, I don't want to tell go through everything that you have with the Euro 6 engine. You can go to our YouTube videos. It tells you about regenerative braking and the Euro 6 engines, etc, etc. But fundamentally what a Euro 6 engine is doing, or the ECU is doing, it's jumping from 12.4 volts up to 15.5 volts. So when you're driving along, it stays around 12.4 volts. When you put your foot on the brakes or slowing down, it jumps up to 15.5 volts and runs lots of energy into the, the battery. Now this works on the starter battery for two reasons. Number one, you'll find that your alternator on the Euro 6 engine has jumped away up in size. Your previous models were probably 70, 80 amps. Your new models will be 160 up to 260 amps. Also your starter battery will have got larger as well. The older starter battery was probably 60 amps. The newer one will be 100, 120 amps. So that will have got bigger as well. Now the whole reason for this is that your ECU drops down to 12.4 volts and discharges your starter battery by about 20% so that when you slow down or brake the voltage can shoot away up to 15.5 volts and fire lots of juice really quickly into your starter battery and then when you drive off again it drops down to 12.4 and that electric you dumped in the starter battery leaks out and runs the vehicle free. So that's a, the quick version of what your Euro 6 is doing. Now let's add a relay to your splitting system. So the first and obvious thing is when the vehicle is at 12.4 volts the ECU is designed in order to discharge your starter battery by 20%. So say for the sake of argument you had just left a site and your secondary battery was full then this system here is going to drop down to 80%. So the first thing that's going to happen is your starter battery or your auxiliary battery is going to discharge into your starter battery and then discharge down to 80%. Because at the end of the day they're both joined together and they're both going to do the same thing so they're both going to discharge. Now bear in mind this could be at 12.4 volts for an hour uh, if it was daylight and your battery was fully charged you're just driving down the road it could be there for an hour. So you're, A you're not charging the secondary battery system and B um, you're discharging it. So that can't be a good thing. Now let's take it when you do break or you do slow down and the voltage shoots up to 15.5 volts and everybody goes, well that's wonderful, we're really going to charge your battery. Well you are absolutely going to charge your battery. So let's do the 15.2 or whatever voltage it is. That varies dramatically from, we've seen Fords at 15.2, 15.4, we've seen Renaults at 17 volts. So we're going to do this now, the big jump, and see what happens. So if the alternator jumps to 15.5 volts, you're going to get 15.5 volts here. Well, you join the two together so you're going to get 15.5 volts here. Now you've got 
two very major problems are going to happen here. The starter battery is only designed to drop by that 20%, so they've taken that into the maths. Let's say your auxiliary battery here is empty. So you've now got a 250 or 150 to 200 amp alternator at 15.5 volts with a direct route to a battery that say is empty. So what's going to happen is the 150 amps that was going to go into here will simply go down this route up through here through the relay and into your battery. Sounds good. We're going to charge at 150 amps at 15.5 volts. But if you read the specification on the battery you have here, it's probably AGM or gel or sealed or something along those lines. Read the specification, maximum charge voltage, 14.4 volts. And then the C rating, which is the maximum continuous charge it'll take. You'll see all sorts of big figures being, oh, we can charge at 17 volts and we can charge at 2C. And they can, but that's not their continuous rating. That's just what you do that once a year. But this is, what is their continuous rating? And the continuous C rating for an AGM battery is 0.3C. Okay, so the, um, that means that if you've got a 100 amp battery, the fastest you can charge it on a regular basis is 30 amps. Okay, so you're now charging at 15.5 volts, so you're way above that, so you're already starting to gas your battery, and the maximum charge rate is 30 amps, and you've got a 150 to 250 amp alternator. Well, you're definitely exceeding the rate there. So what will happen is, if you take this vehicle for a spin out the road, um, you'll come back and you'll go, oh, I'm sort of charging my battery. If you were lucky enough to get it so the relay had engaged and you're at the 15.5 volts, you'll come back and go, I'm charging my battery. Six months down the line, your battery's going to be wrecked. Okay. Now, the biggest damage one will be the 150 amps into the empty battery. Now, that can be fixed to a large extent by what they do with the car vans or the, the camper vans with the non Euro 6 system is if you had to make this, this cable here garbage. So instead of doing a good cable that can carry 150 amps, what you can do is get an absolute rubbish cable, a very thin one, that can only carry 10 amps. Okay, so that means that when the vehicle goes on to the 15.5 volts and it wants to ram 150 amps down your system into your second battery system, the cabling is so bad that it limits it to 10 amps. Now, if that's what you want, and if that's what you are going to use because you're going from campsite to campsite, you would get off of this. As in, from the safety point of view, you're better doing the thin cable thing. From the performance point of view, it's absolutely appalling. I mean, you are just going to devastate the capability of your vehicle. Now, I mean, if you're happy with that, that's okay. If you're not happy with that and you think you've purchased a vehicle that you can drive up the road and do a wild side camping, then what you've got here is absolute garbage. First of all, when you're 12.4 volts, which could be most of the day, you're doing absolutely nothing around the system. And then when you do jump to the 15.5 volts, which the whole point of this 15.5 volts on regen braking is to ram juice in quickly. So you're putting 150 amps into this battery and you're putting 10 amps into your battery, which is where you want the power. Now, I would suggest to you that this is unfit for purpose. If you have bought your vehicle on the illusion that you can use it for camping or wild side camping, then absolutely unfit for purpose. If you have bought it to go from campsite to campsite and you don't want to stop at the side of the road or stop overnight or stop somewhere else and then charge the vehicle battery the next, there the next morning, that's fine. But don't complain about it when you find your batteries aren't charging. So there's the problem with the uh, Euro 6 and the relay. Um, basically, the, the, it boils down to either you're going to destroy your battery if you put in a good relay and a good charging cable, or if you put in a rubbish relay and a rubbish charging cable, you're just not going to be able to charge your batteries efficiently or effectively at all. 
Um, either way, you're going to not get the best results that you could do from your vehicle. So if we were to replace all that with, instead of a relay, which is what some people are doing, most of the builders now are using a thing called the battery to battery charger, which is, this is your split charge relay, and this is a battery to battery charger. There is a difference. This is 100 years old, this is two years old, and yet look at the size difference. So this is obviously doing something that this isn't. Okay, so let's just um, put in the battery to battery charger. So you go with the same type of cable over to the same place over there. So what a battery to battery charger does is different than the relay is when you're at the 12.4 volts, it doesn't mind. It will take the 12.4 in, but it'll put out 14.4. When you jump up to 15.5 volts and you get all this high power, which is going to do all the damage, you can put 15.5 volts in and you still get 14.4 volts out. So when you're low, we boost it up. When you're high, we drop it down so that your battery is seeing it's rated or it's what it's expecting to see for its charge voltage. On top of that, when you're on boost or when you're on that short term when you're trying to boost charge the batteries and you're trying to put 150 amps in, so 150 amps will come up to our product and our product will go, no, we're not giving 150 amps. We will give out 30 or 60 or whatever you have purchased. Uh, product you purchased, you bought a 30 amp, will only give you 30 amps. So if you only got a single battery, the most you want to charge it is 0.3C, which is 30 amps. We'll give you 30 amps. You have two batteries, you can charge up to 60 amps by the, bat the 60 amp battery to battery charger. Your batteries will last you 10 times longer and they'll fully charge because there's no back feed when you're at the 12.4 volts. We're not feeding anything back and the system isn't switched on. Some of the more advanced split charge relays, what they're doing is they're getting the relay and they're fitting it into the ECU system so that when the engine is on the 12.4, the relay open circuits. So there's no back feed. That's a good thing, as in you're not back feeding, but it doesn't alter the fact that you're also not charging. Whereas then when they go onto the boost, they rely on the rubbish cables to act as current limits. So your actual effective charging using this is very, very, very low, absolute minimal. Um, and if that's what you want, that's fine. If you want to charge your batteries right, charge them fast, charge them efficiency, this is what the professionals are using. So what you need to do, if you bought a new camper van, um, check if you can find a relay for the split charge relay. If you've got found a split charge relay, read the front of it, it'll probably say 40 or 50 amps. And if it's a 40 or 50 amp relay on a 150 amp alternator, you'll guarantee the cables going to it are absolute garbage. So check that out, check the cabling, and then go to the person who supplied you the vehicle and just use the term, not fit for purpose. I say, if you have bought it for off-road camping, this is 100% not fit for purpose. Okay, go and check your vehicle out and see whether you've got one of those or one of these or something similar. I mean, it doesn't have to be our product, but um, at least a battery to battery charger. Okay, thanks then. That's the end of that one. Um, thanks then. Right, let's that off and see if that worked.